Rich Robinson with us in the Bing Lounge this afternoon. Let's hear it, guys. First things first, greetings and salutations. Welcome back to Portland, my man. Cool, man. Thank you. Now, we got you at the Star Theater tonight, right? Yeah. Now, it's got to be something, I mean, to be said for festivals and all, but uh, how about the, uh, the intimacy of uh, the smaller venues back at that? Does that feel good to be feeling that again? Um, yeah, it's cool. It's, uh, it's interesting because, you know, we have a lot of people that follow my other band. And so I see these people that I've seen for 20 years, some of them for 20 years, you know, people that go to like hundreds of shows. Hey, there's one. <laughs> and uh, it's, kind of, it's really, in it's cool to see people up front and kind of just talk to them. And, you know, because there's a relationship there. You know, every time we come to this town or this region, there's a lot of people that we see and get to, you know, it's like every time I'm here, I see this person, and you get to know them, you know, it's, it's, so it's really interesting to finally get to talk to them. So that's cool. You're a part of another band then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, okay, then let's talk about that. Let's talk about what's the difference between Rich Robinson, the solo artist writer, as opposed to the Black Crows Rich Robinson writer? Um, well, it's, it's more writing for my voice. I mean, when I wrote songs for the crows it's for chris my brother so i kind of would write these this music t with his voice in mind and what he can do in his kind of range and so i would always write thinking about okay well how's he going to sing this chorus or how's he going to sing this verse and with me the, f the first solo record because this is my second one the first one was kind of like just fell into my lap i had a singer it didn't really work out and i had all these songs that i'd written for this guy that had this specific voice and then i just said well you know i'll just sing over it and kind of do it and and this time i kind of have a far more of an understanding of what i can do vocally and so i wrote pertaining to that you know well let's talk about that too nothing more natural than asking a man to come in and sing at noon so yeah well, thank you for doing that. yeah exactly let's talk about the new album then through a crooked sun right uh it sounds as if there's something more intimate for you in that title or was it just something on a sunday morning some mimosas and it sounded yeah good. <laughs> we were by the beach with some mimosas and some bellinis and we were testing no uh it was more like something in something in my world or the, the way I see the world seems slightly askew. It seems the same, but it seems like it's shifting in a weird way. And so it could be, you know, human consciousness. It could be my consciousness. It could be this world. But it seems like people are kind of like waking up in a sense in post 9-11 America. That like, wow, this doesn't really seem right. You know, we've been kind of living this way for a long time and the system doesn't really work. It's really just feeding a few people and it's not feeding the world. And, and I feel like sometimes I go about my day and it just seems weird. It's, and, and a crooked sun, you know, obviously isn't meant to be taken literally, but it's, uh, you know, it's like just some, everything seems, looks the same, but it seems slightly off a little bit. And so that's kind of where that whole thing came from. Sounds like, or it seems like, because I was listening to the entire album last night, it just seems like this one, you had a little bit more time to think about what this album was going to be for you. Yeah, well, um, actually this one, I didn't. I just, <laughs> yeah. We just, I mean, a lot of these songs, most of the songs are six months old, and Joe and I were working on, Joe toured with the Crows last year as a percussionist, although he's, he's the, you know, he's a drummer. He, we, I'm like, hey, you want to come hang out? He's like, yeah. I'll, I'll bang on some stuff and uh but he was great and um joe and i would just work at stuff at, at the end of the tour at soundcheck just i had a couple of ideas and and so a lot of this stuff is just new you know and 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 i kind of felt that that was freeing you know in a sense um instead of uh you know worrying about it, it was it was definitely more of a flow and then lyrically i hadn't written any lyrics so i just you know we went in, Joe, Steve, and I went in in um, January just to do some demos. I'm like, oh, let's just go to the studio and see what it's like. And it was great. And then I had a couple of ideas, a couple of conceptual ideas of what I wanted the, the concept of the song to be, but I didn't write anything. And I didn't write anything the whole time we were recording the music. And then everyone left, and I was like, all right, I got to write these songs. Well, that worked well for you, man, because yeah. it's very cohesive. Yeah. You want to introduce who you got riding on the bus with you, too? <laughs> um, not that guy, but I'll talk about these guys. <laughs> He rides in the trailer. This is Dri this is Brian Allen. There you go. And we have Steve Molitz on the keyboards. 
You may or may not know him from a band called Particle. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. And then Joe Magistro on drums. Well, what's really cool, too, is you got to bring in some heavy hitters. You got Medeski, and then, of course, working with Larry Campbell. And uh, we just had Warren up on stage like three weeks ago. Uh, did you meet Warren like when Mule was warming for Crows or Crows warming for Al Allman Brothers? Well, yeah, Chris and I met. We did a thing when MTV first started doing Unplugged, Unplugged, where, which they wanted us to plug in, but, we, you know, like our acoustics. So we're like, the whole point of Unplugged is to not plug anything in. So we were... Defiant. We we're like, we're, gonna, we're not going to plug our guitars in. We're going to mic them. And it didn't really pan out very well. <laughs> but we were like one of the first bands they asked to do that. So we did it. And then they, they, were, they were doubling up. So the Almonds were right next to us. They were coming in for like another thing. And so uh, Warren had heard our record and was, a, and was a big fan and was like, hey, man, you know, I'm Warren. I love you guys and whatever. And that's where we first met him. And then uh, when he put together Government Mule, we had actually had them open for us on, a, on Amorica, I think, or one of those records. Um, I think it was Amorica. And so that's when we got to, you know, really know Warren. Sw amazing guy, really sweet guy. So, yeah. Good stuff in what he does. Christmas Jam as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, congratulations on the new album, cool. man. I, I hope everything's just, you, you seem like you're happy, you, you yeah. seem good, and yeah, all absolutely. the vibe around you is really good. So, uh, yeah. Do what, you, do what feels good and do it until you, you know, it doesn't feel good anymore, right? Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, once again, we got the new album, Through a Crooked Sun. Please welcome, once again, it's Rich Robinson. <laughs>